514 now. Investigators still looking into why a gunman opened fire at the Michigan State University campus Monday, killing three students and injuring five others. Now, the shooting all happened just a day before the five year anniversary of the tragic Parkland, Florida shooting that killed 17 students. Now, students at Michigan State University recount the terrifying moments after having to shelter in place. Listen to this. Our first thought is just to get as far away from the situation as possible, as fast as possible. So we were just booking it on our bikes back to our dorm to try and get to what we would consider a safe place. Now, police say the gunman shot and killed himself off campus. They do not uh, have any knowledge of the shooter's connection to the university this morning, but they are continuing to investigate. And this story hitting very close to home for us. It is an exclusive here on Connecticut's news station. A young man from Tolland who now attends Michigan State University. He is a senior there spending hours with his friends all while the gunman went on this deadly rampage just some 300 feet from where he lives. His name is Mason and he and his friends, here he is, were coming up with a plan on how they could keep the gunman out and how they could defend themselves if he was able to get into their fraternity house. Mason was also texting his mom and dad at the same time, all in an effort just to let them know that he was okay. I was texting my mom every five minutes, just even if it was just saying, hey, yo, just something to let her know that I'm, I'm alive right now. My first reaction was, yeah, Check you have friend. to defend yourself. I mean, if somebody's breaking the door down, What's I your mean, plan? you have numerous people there. To either be in Mason's shoes or mom and dad's shoes, it, it's just horrifying to think about. Mom and dad, Barbara and John, said given the difficult circumstances, they appreciate how transparent the university was in keeping their community informed, wishing Mason the best after, obviously, a traumatic situation. Yeah. All right, at 516 now, happening later today, Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz is talking gun violence and domestic violence reduction. Tuesday, Governor Ned Lamont met with leaders to talk about a series of recommendations they say will reduce gun violence. They introduced 10 proposals. Now, the main focus, greater accountability and consequences for those committing gun-related crimes. Lawmakers say gun violence in Connecticut is driven by repeat offenders. This is just one piece of the puzzle. We tried very hard, you know, over the last few weeks to put together a puzzle that will make your community safer. Our proposals include actions like establishing a definition for a serious firearm offense, requiring those with a history of past offenses to post a higher bond percentage, and strengthening the consequences for a criminal possession of a firearm. All right, some new video to share with you this morning. So I listen to Rachel Piscatelli because she is my friend. She is super smart and she knows what she's talking about. Look at this barrel go. So mm -hmm. when the meteorologist tells you to keep your furniture to move it inside, strong winds are headed your way, you want to do it. This is in Las Vegas where folks have lost power. One resident lost their garbage can as it just blows right on down the road here as strong winds plowed through the area. Fox weather saying the high winds are associated with a cold front traveling across the state this week. The wind out of Nevada also caused delays at the major airport there in Las Vegas. Look at that barrel go. You have a weather animation that does that. Now, the Fox 61 Weather Watch with meteorologist Rachel Piscitelli. We do have a where's my trash can graphic, which we may need this afternoon as those winds begin to pick up in intensity as we turn windy and warmer today. Record challenging warmth, especially along the Connecticut shoreline for Thursday. So while we're in the upper 50s today, we could be close to the upper 50s to near 60 tomorrow. Showers late Thursday into Friday, and that'll drop our temperatures back at least for one day by this weekend. You'll notice that temperatures should be in the upper 30s and average lows are around the 20s. The record set back uh, a while ago was 69 degrees. Uh, we will not see that today. It'll be in the 50s. 37 in Glastonbury. It's 31 right now in Newington. 39 in Southington. 31 over in Meriden this morning. 
35 in Brantford. It's 40 degrees over in Milford, 36 in Shelton. So while it is a little bit cooler than this time yesterday, you certainly want to grab that jacket, but it is still above where we should be for this time of year. Winds right now are fine. As we go through the afternoon, those winds will begin to pick up in intensity. We could see gust potential upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. The satellite and radar this morning is showing we have a few clouds out there. There's also some spotty shower activity just to the west of us this morning. A couple of those showers could make their way into Connecticut a little bit later on. So we'll pause it here at 7 a.m. You can see that spotty shower chance very isolated in nature and very light in nature too. You just need to use your windshield wipers every once in a while through the morning commute. I don't think it's going to be widespread though. One or two towns may get in on that. Any clouds out there now will make way for sunshine this afternoon as those high temperatures continue to climb into the 50s across the state and those winds again will be picking up out of the south. Overnight tonight it remains mild so temperatures tonight will be in the 40s waking up tomorrow morning will be in the 40s and low 50s. Clouds roll back in for Thursday afternoon as those highs climb into the 60s and upper 50s across the state. Closer to dinner time we'll have a round of rain that enters the picture that'll be rather quick moving. So by 10, 11 o'clock in the evening, things are quieting down. We have a lot of clouds. It remains mild overnight. We'll start the day on Friday with a lot of cloud coverage and very mild conditions in addition to another round of rain. And then eventually things quiet down and those temperatures begin to take a tumble across the state. So for today, 57 to about 59 degrees right down to the Connecticut shoreline. Tonight, we're down into the 40s. So very mild conditions. And then we're talking about record break warm for Thursday in addition to the rain. So 72 degrees set back in 1954 for the Hartford area. We're forecasting 63 degrees. So while we aren't expecting record breaking warm for inland locations along the Connecticut shoreline where we have our records in Bridgeport, 57 degrees set back in 2018, we're forecasting just around 59 degrees. So that rain chances increase for Thursday and Friday. Falling temperatures are expected into this upcoming weekend, but we rebound right back into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees for the second half of your weekend, guys. Thank you, Rachel. 521 as we continue to celebrate Black History Month here at Fox 61. We're highlighting a black-owned brewing company right here in Connecticut. All the sweet flavors offered coming up. And coming up at 530, new details involving an Ohio train derailment. What officials... Uh, are talking about what we've learned and the efforts to keep people safe. That's ahead as well.